When the distillery was built in 1830, you think of nothing. Think yourself on a tiny little rowing boat as you row into the shores of Loch Harport here and deciding that you're going to build, which nowadays is one of the biggest brands in Scotch whisky, so well known all over the world. You know, when we think about Talisker, it's such an iconic building. For me, it's, you know, it's an absolute dream place to, to call home and to call work. Embark on a spirited journey through time and tradition where golden barley transform into liquid gold. Whiskey. From the verdant fields to the mastery within each oak cast, we explore the soulful alchemy of distillation across iconic distilleries. Join us as we unravel the tales and taste of a legacy meticulously crafted, drop by precious drop. This is Whiskey Stories. What are we up for? So we're going to have a little tour around production and see how we kind of create Talisker's character, that specific flavour that everyone knows and loves about the place. So it's uh, lovely to welcome you here and shall we head off? So you'll find, you know, those, those typical Talisker aromas, that, that smoke, that maritime sort of um, salt spray in there, that, um, that coastal note is... For me, it's more of those sort of um, berries, those dark fruits are actually stepping to the front. This uh, characteristic uh, smoky character of, uh, of Talisker, yeah. where does it come from? So that comes from how we dry the barley. Um, so Talisker we categorize as, as a medium peated malt. Um, so, so Talisker sits in that sort of nice territory of having a reasonable amount of smoke to it, but it allows lots of other flavors to still sort of shine and be easily identifiable. So you've got that smoky backbone, but there's other flavors at play. Um, and I, I quite like that because it really allows that, that sort of maritime influence to, to shine through. Talisker's a little bit softer than, say, the Isla whiskies, so we're not as heavily peated. With this light, gentle smoke, almost like a kind of campfire in the distance kind of style, right? What I always get with Talisker, and it's my way of spotting it in a blind tasting, is um, as soon as you sip it, you get that peppery prickle right on the tip of the tongue. It just kind of dances on the tip of the tongue. And I don't tend to really get that with any other malt. Um, but I always find it with Talisker. So you get that at the start, you get a little bit of dryness at the sides, but with this there is that fruitiness and sweetness as well. And then again, always with Talisker, you get that little chilli catch right at the back of the palate. Let's have a sip. The stills on the right hand side, those are um, really tall and slender. They also have a little pipe that returns any of the alcohol that boils up and over that doesn't make it out to be condensed, returned back into the still again to be kind of redistilled. Okay, so we'll have a lot of uh, copper contact. Exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah, lots and lots of copper contact. That's what produces the pepperiness. That's where we kind of determine that comes from. Okay. Like that sharpness in our spirit. There is smoke there for sure, but it's, it's quite warming. It's quite, it's got richness to it. Um, so with some Talskers, you get more of that sort of, um, almost like a bonfire on the beach, you know, that's sort of dry wood yeah, smoke. Yeah. This one's a bit more of an earthy, warmer smoke, and I think it's because of that port wood that's just sort of added that richness and depth to it. Quite, quite a lingering finish, actually. After you. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> so, at this stage of production now, our grain is all ground up, all that barley, that first ingredient, is ground up into a flour, and in this big kind of copper-topped vessel here called a mash tun, is where we introduce hot water with the, with the grain, with the, the flour. Shall we add a little splash of water? Yes, let's try that. Yeah, so if you take your dropper, and I recommend initially just, just a few little drops, um, maybe three or four little drops. Give it a swirl, let it mix. And what I tend to find when you add water to a cast strength whiskey like this, it doesn't suddenly reveal lots of new flavours that weren't there before. It just allows the individual flavour to separate out a little bit and it becomes easier to unpick what's happening and to individually identify what's happening in the glass. So you'll notice after even just three or four drops of water, that smoke has actually become a little bit more apparent. So a lot of people think you add water, it's diluting everything, it's going to dilute all the flavours. That's actually not the case. It actually allows some flavours to really step forward and reveal themselves more. So I find the smoke is more pronounced now with some water. And those fruits are very much still there, but they're more identifiable as well. I'd say you're getting almost like black currants, you're getting sort of um, stewed cherries coming through. And a little bit of wood as well, there's a little bit of, sort of oak wood coming through now. 
it's um, a completely uh, new uh, mm. expression. Yeah. Uh, from yeah. It. It's almost juicier, if that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> that is fruity, like those flavours you've uh, smelt downstairs, like a bit of citrus, a bit of pear, kind of orchardy fruits. That's our base alcohol that we then take through downstairs into distillation. So we make alcohol in this room. Downstairs is where we basically increase it by boiling off any remaining water and just taking through pure alcohol. Yes. What I love about that is that it really allows us to to show Talisker at various points in its flavour journey, at various um, age points, and also at ver various price points as well. I think one of the things that people love about Talisker is that at a young age, it's vibrant, it's spicy, it's intense, it's fresh. But then at an old age, you still have that spice and smoke, but you have a richness and a depth to it as well. So for me, it's a whiskey which shines at a young age and at a very, very high age as well. Um, I think Talisker, more than any other distillery, really embodies its sense of place. So as soon as you smell that whiskey, you're right here. No, it's such an iconic place, and I think which is really unique about Talisker is its sense of place. I mean, when we taste a, when we taste a Talisker, I don't know about you, but I get transported pretty much right back to where we're standing, you know, right by the sea, the seaweed that's on the, on the, the shore here as well. Yeah. That all, you know, it's all encompassing of, of the spirit character. Really, it's kind of like wine, a bit like terroir, how it, you know, it kind of tastes like how it's made and where it was made. I mean, Talisker very much embodies that. What about the future? We, we, we have some exciting expressions coming in the, in the near and, and distant future. Um, oh, really? From, in November, we're going to be announcing uh, a, a new release, which is really cool, but I can't tell you anything more about it yet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we, we are still sort of working with how we can play with the wood, how we can sort of really sort of push flavour in different directions when it comes to really high-aged expressions of Talisker. So, you know, we, we like to try new things. We're doing things with some non-age declared expressions. We recently had a, a duty-free exclusive called Talisker Surge, which again was sort of highlighting this sort of almost the, the, sort of the power of the ocean in terms of how that translates into flavour. So yeah, we're, 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 we're really focused on, on the flavour and style that this area and this distillery represent. So you will definitely see some, some very cool things coming. What about the uh, whiskey and food? Probably my, my favorite food and whiskey combination ever is Talisker with oysters. It's yeah. just the perfect combination. And the, these, they, they, they just complement so, so well. Um, and for me, the, the oyster actually highlights the smoke and the spice of the talisker. And then the talisker almost highlights that sweet brine and creaminess of the oyster. So it's the perfect combination. Right behind this distillery, just on the hill behind the distillery, two minutes walk up the hill, there's a little oyster shed. It's quite rustic, <laughs> but you can go up there, you can take your bottle of talisker and a couple of glasses, buy some oysters and literally sit looking out across the bay and out to the Coolin Hills and have your Talisker and oyster. So I think we should do that. What I recommend is having a little sip of Talisker. We're going to do Talisker 25 year old. With Talisker 25 the smoke is a little subdued, it's a little softer just by having two and a half decades in, in wood. Um, the spice is still there, the intensity is still there, but it's super rounded. It's got a lovely sweetness as well. So we thought it would go really nicely with these oysters. Um, so you have a little sip of your Talisker, and yes. then you, you take your oyster, and then you pour some Talisker in the oyster shell, and then drink it from the shell. Which is a little bit decadent, but it's a lot of fun. Okay. <laughs> so, a little sip of your Talisker. Cheers. Cheers. And then you want to take your, your oyster. Oops. Dish Talisker in your shell. Mm. Beautiful. They just complement wow. each other so well. So That's that a match made in heaven. Yeah. But you and this is just uh, just incredible and amazing. Thank you for spending the day with us here uh, at Talisker. It's been a pleasure. It really has for uh, for our sake. So let's uh, have another toast and another oyster, and then uh, thank you for today. So it's a good plan. Cheers. Cheers.